Hello, welcome to How to Deal with Artists panel, hosted by Jack here, who should be Hi. saying Hi. Hi. <laughs> can, you, can, can you hear me? Sorry, I'm having some internet issues that weren't there yesterday. Uh, <laughs> you're, you're coming through loud and clear to us, so hopefully. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay, so um, since I can't see anyone, uh, we have someone here who's going to tell me if anybody has questions. Um, this has how to work with artists. We do this panel every year. It's about um, knowing the ins and out of what working artists go through and what you need to know is a publisher and uh, or a art director or just a individual who has a game that they're working on. If you wanna work with us, the ins and outs and how to make the process smoother. Um, so let's start with some introductions. Uh, my name is Jack Clara. I am the artist alley coordinator for Double Exposure. I uh, I worked on multiple games at this point, mostly card games and uh, small and tabletop RPGs uh, like uh, Metal Magic and Lore. Um, and I've done uh, currently I've been working on kids novels. Uh, doing the covers and illustrations. I'm working on the third one of those. And uh, I've done uh, done two of the Dexcon D-shirts slash uh, <laughs> T-shirts slash uh, program covers. Right, who would like to go next? How about Lisa? Okay. Hi, I'm Lisanne Lake. I've been an illustrator for, oh, well, too many years. I started working in the science fiction fantasy field uh, doing paintings for Dragon Magazine about 30 years ago. I've done several hundred book covers and presently I'm doing a lot of work for Chivalry and Sorcery 5th edition and I'm working on a bestiary now, which is like only 50 paintings, but you know. <laughs> only 50 paintings. Yeah, I've, no done, I've done 50 paintings for them for several books now. <laughs> May I ask if, if that's digital or are you doing traditional? Oh, traditional, fude oh, day. I use a brush. I'm fast <laughs> and a awesome. photo realist. Yeah, so it's practice. It's being old. Okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah I, I work uh, kind of half and half depending on the, depending on the uh, project. I do a lot of my line work by hand and coloring digitally. Yes, we're on Zoom. Can you tell I'm not computer literate? You know? <laughs> No. <laughs> I think this is my third Zoom meeting since yeah, since Zoom has become a oh. thing. So I'm not I'm not a, uh, I'm still a novice, but I'm not a, a you know neophyte. Anyways, uh, my name is Storm Cook. I've been working uh, in science fiction, fantasy, role playing games, card games, some comics here and there um, for uh, getting close to three decades now. Um, I, I'm not alone. I, yeah, no, I'm, <laughs> I'm up there in age. Um, I do not, I do not full time freelance anymore. I do have a, a nine to five. I'm talking to you from our upstairs uh, teaching room. Uh, I work for a small um, energy company in upstate New York, um, but I still freelance on the side. And I would say most of my business now is actually not working for publishers, but working uh, doing private commissions for people all over the world. <laughs> But I have lots of experience with publishers. I've worked with probably, I don't know, 100 publishers, something along around there. Yeah. Nice. So, uh, yeah, Jack, do you want do you want to start laying out the, um, the sort of the framework of of, of our, our Zoom zooming? Yes, I will. Okay, so. Normally, the way we do this panel is I have an outline. They go over things with, uh, and then, uh, sorry, I got a little delay on my phone too. It doesn't matter. <laughs> so as you go through your outline, are we allowed okay. to sort of chime in at, at various points? Like, you know, yeah. you talk about then Okay. I, yeah, I, absolutely. I, I, I so as I go through that. Before, so. Yeah, mm -hmm. as I go through the outline, if any of the audience members have any questions, let us know, and they'll be uh, through the Twitch chat, and they'll be uh, they'll be let uh, they'll let us know about them. 
I'm, I was trying to stream the Twitch chat so I could see them myself, but I'm having some uh, technical difficulties and it seems to be about three minutes behind. So I'm hearing myself speak right after I speak. Um, <laughs> so, uh, yeah. So if, uh, if either of the other panelists have anything to chime in, you know, feel free to do so. If, and if you have any questions, ask through the chat and one of the moderators will uh, prompt us about them. Okay, so the basic idea is we're gonna. I'm gonna go through this outline. I'm gonna start with. Uh, actually, how many of you are actually working on games? Is anyone in the audience there that I can answer questions? <laughs> well, <laughs> basically, we'll start with uh, where to find artists. How do you how do you approach us, and how do you find the find people to work on your game? Uh, so, throw a rock at Facebook, you'll find yep. an artist. It's it's pretty damn easy. What was the first one? Throw a rock at Facebook. You'll oh, find throw a rock at pretty Facebook. Damn easy. <laughs> I, I mean, I actually follow a lot of fellow artists, and there's a lot of groups out there like you know, fantasy art and stuff like that, and people are posting their their paintings and their drawings and their digital stuff and their 3d modeling and all that um it's all over uh you know and then there's of course the you know rpg net has a has a freelancer section um there's conceptart.com which is you know they've got a looking for artist section there's um uh deviant art of course is the is the granddaddy where you know thousands of artists now i think that the tough part is it's easy to find artists but is it easy to find artists that um hit your particular uh needs as a publisher i think that becomes a little bit more of a difficult task and uh there's a tried and true method and that is you know talk to your fellow publishers and ask around and see who they have in their stable um i've gotten jobs because other artists couldn't make a deadline or simply couldn't even take the job and an art director recommended me to another art director. So it's, you know, be kind to your art directors. You're there to solve their problems and um, you'll get work. Yep. It's, it's, That's, you've covered nearly everything I was going to say. I was yeah, going exactly. to say talk to no, other that's fine. That's fine. You, I'm very opinionated. You like. Yeah especially ones who have work you like, and just ask them who did that. They're often happy to get their artists to work. They feel, they feel like that. And I have to say, I got my present gig through RPG.net. Oh, on Facebook. I've got nice. work from there too. Yeah. Yeah. I've got nice. yeah mm -hmm. um, I've been for a couple of years. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, you basically covered um, my first point uh, <laughs> for, for, uh, fun finding artists my another one is conventions uh, mm -hmm. i'll be this one is online face-to-face -face interaction even if it's via streaming is invaluable to see if uh how you how the artist works and how you can you know if you have you'll have a good working relationship with the artist um i've got a story on that and and i know lisa mentioned doing dragon magazine covers well i did Words of the north for two and a half years for Dragon Magazine, and it was because I'm the art from... the art director got so annoyed that I kept sending him a portfolio every month that he said finally he said I, I'm I'm tired I'm done I have a giant you know file folder full of your stuff stop sending me stuff I'm giving you work so I mean it was tongue in cheek <laughs> but um, but I mean persistence and 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 uh, and I met him at at a convention and that's how I started sending him work. So I wanted to dovetail back to, to that. Uh, I've gotten a lot of my work through just walking around with a portfolio that I could give away. I always had little uh, giveaways. I think that's really important. And just walk up to a, to a table that's, you know, a publisher and say, Hey, is your art director here? They say, no. You say, can I leave this for them? I once had uh, at Gen Con, I, did that exact spiel to no, my art director's not here. And I said, okay, thanks. Can I leave this with him? He said, sure. And I turned around, I'm walking away and he calls me back and he's, and he's flipping through my stuff. He said, you know what? I looked at your stuff and I know you're perfect for this particular project that we have. And I had work literally the next day when I met the art director the next day um, at Gen Con. So it, it is, you know, 
it is a people person kind of skill that that a lot of us reclusive you know and introverted artists are not particularly good at but you can get better at doing it and it's just it literally make it easy on yourself give them something yeah. don't have any pressure don't don't tell them like you know i'm god's gift to artists and try to take the place of one of their best just say hey here's here's something for you to look at walk away yeah i mean to, to be honest like you're whether you're hired number number one thing they want to see is your portfolio Mm-hmm. Yeah, mm-hmm. your portfolio speaks volumes. These days, I keep a portfolio on my Kindle. Mm-hmm. I can give people samples. I can send. I can send them anything they like immediately. If they like something, I just send them more work like that. Yeah, yeah I, I, I give remember them the last samples. Time I, I have portfolio. <laughs> no, 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 no. It's it was. I'm glad. Yeah, I, I I I try to keep as much current work as I can on my phone, mm-hmm. not Me not too. even through the internet because you know, though everybody wants it these days to everything to be via the internet, you know, Wi-Fi isn't always reliable. Right. <laughs> so I always have JPEGs on my phone of current stuff, and if the internet is available, I send on my website. You know, mm-hmm. um. I like uh, making the QR codes uh, and the little uh, square barcodes so people can just scan it with their phone and go right to my website. Wow. Mm-hmm. That's so um, fun. Yeah. I, 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 use, it, I use a I, Facebook page, Jack. Yeah, I haven't had much luck with Facebook overall. I have great luck. Uh, web pages are passive and you have to send people to them. Facebook is active. And it draws people in. You wouldn't otherwise know it. I found contacts from so long ago and ex-boyfriends, but uh, <laughs> through the Facebook page. <laughs> yeah, so, I, I, yeah, I have multiples. <laughs> I have, uh, I have my website. I have Facebook. I have an artist page on Facebook. I have Twitter, mm-hmm. and I have Tumblr. Uh, I was usually oh. tum. Tumblr for a while there had an automatic thing where you post it on Tumblr, it posts it everywhere else. But that doesn't seem to work anymore, unfortunately. My website has that where I can I can cross post. I also use Pinterest, but but I actually am an end user of Pinterest because I find a lot of my reference there. Um, so yeah, me too. We'll, we'll come back to to reference yeah. I know, later later in the, yeah, in the we'll, conversation. Yeah, we'll get that. Um, uh, Google Images. I love Google Images. Yep. Yeah. Uh, I can draw. Uh, it's not going to help the art director, so I'll be no. quiet. <laughs> uh, another another site that I really like that's newer is uh, ArtStation. I haven't um, used them. Uh, it's it's heavy in the sci-fi fantasy artist world. And it's rather, it's pretty new. It's only a couple years old, I think. Um, but I'm I mean, transferring my website to them. One with, thing, and, one thing uh, I'd go like ahead. to bring up for publishers, because we kind of devolved into what we as artists are doing, looking for work, how we're looking for publishers. But uh, publishers in this day and age have something that publishers just 15 years ago didn't. And that is they have an international stable of artists. I mean, there are mm-hmm. people coming from, you know, Croatia and Yugoslavia and China and Hong Kong and Philippines and South America. Mm-hmm. And, and uh, I mean, it makes the competition for, our, for us very difficult, but there's a lot of good talent out there that if you do the work, um, you can get that won't break your budget your publisher's yeah. budget, mm-hmm. you know? Yeah, um, there, there is a risk with uh, international mm-hmm. artists, though, uh, especially outside the, uh, the continent. And that is, uh, we'll, we'll go more in it, into it with our next phase. Uh, but uh, that's copyrights, international mm-hmm. copyright law. Like, if you're in the U.S., you definitely have the copyright law. Outside of the U.S., it starts to get a little more complicated and wishy-washy. Uh, <laughs> um, learn the copyright law I've been working for mostly for Britain for several years now quite a number of years and I have no problem okay <laughs> yeah that's that's good to know yeah I've I haven't worked outside of Canada as the farthest I've gone <laughs> so 
<laughs> but uh yeah we'll we'll uh really go into that in a little bit um unless anybody has specific questions about it um at this point there are no questions for what it's worth um but um okay please go on so, i'll let you know if there are any okay are, thank are you are we talking to an empty room i'm just curious no 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 you actually have 22 people currently watching. oh good oh, okay hi <laughs> there <laughs> yeah, it's it. Yeah, I, th this format is a little harder to tell. <laughs> okay, so um, well, unless anybody has something else on that subject, I was going to move on to the uh, to the next step. Okay, next step is contacting artists. Um, it sounds silly, but always be respectful and and polite. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Oddly, people need to hear this. <laughs> don't uh, and don't be afraid to uh, approach a prospective artist. the The worst they can do do is tell you no. Um, but what I would do is, if you find someone whose art you like, go up to them and tell them what your your project is about, or even just a basic and. Uh, and ask them how long it would take to do so many pictures. And, uh, and if, you know, w if they have a page rate or, uh, or if you can tell us, uh, if you have a working budget, how many pieces we can give you for that budget. Mm -hmm. I'll say something on that. Don't be afraid to go up to any artist. Nine times out of 10, if they don't want to do the job, they'll recommend somebody. Exactly. I've recommended a lot of artists who just handle things way, you know, who are handle what you're look, someone's looking for way better than I do. Mm -hmm. If someone right. has a mm -hmm. kind of a, has kind of a proficiency in that area, you know, I'll pass it along. Yeah, because not all of us can do anime and Frazetta and, you know, you know, Duchamp and, you know, no. at, at the same time, we all have specialties. We all have, we put shapes down and lines down the way we put shapes and lines down. It's the way our eyes see, it's the way our brains work and our, our hands yeah. work. Um, yeah. and, and style matters because we're in the business of telling stories and mood and ambiance and all that really, you know, is important to, what is what are what is that image doing to support the the words of that product whether it's a game book whether it's a novel our, our pictures are there to support something not just exist mm -hmm. in their own entirety um, yeah i i uh you make a good point to get, oh, uh, i'm go sorry ahead. the pictures are there to get somebody to pick up that product the product is good they'll read it but you're you're there uh, to get them to click on the product to pick up the product. That's, that's your one, job. That's one function. Mm -hmm. But when you get into interior art, into role playing games, you you're illustration. Also, you're mm -hmm. you're also you're also uh, your job is to create um, a break in the text for the for the reader. People learn a lot better when they see color images, and they learn a lot better when they see images over no images at all. So if you have a chapter on encumbrance and there's a knight who's got three pieces of armor on him and seven weapons and the mule is all <laughs> laden down, you're going to remember that. You're going to be able to flip to that page quickly because what we're doing is not just rule books. We're actually doing textbooks as well. Mm -hmm. And textbook theory is really important in the way role-playing games are laid out and done. That's why there's so much art in role-playing games. And I always hear, you know, it's like the art's not important. You know, why don't they just put on, you know, tons of, you know, why can't they give us more words and, and less art? Um, and from, that, go ahead. Not go. only do you have to, not only do you have to tell the story and put a lot of clues in, you cannot give anything away. <laughs> you have to add to the story. Yes. Yeah. If you're doing like a module, you had better not put like the villain with the knife <laughs> back in the first chapter. So I do want to go but you back. Have to, you have to do was... images of art. No, it's uh, not important for buying art with these people are looking for how to how to find an artist. We're talking now about how to 
illustrate something. Right. But yeah. but I want publishers to be aware of some of the mm -hmm. difficulties they themselves face and maybe not even know that they face. I think in mm -hmm. terms of, of, you know, when you're going up to an artist and you're asking about, you know, what kind of art they do, how fast they can do it, um, you should be very aware of the production triangle. I don't know if everybody knows this, but, you know, you got a triangle. You can choose fast, you can choose cheap, and you can choose good. You get Pick two. two. Pick two. You can't get all Pick three. Yep. Yeah. yeah. So cheap, yeah, fast, there, and there's, good. Yeah, there's a million versions of that, but, yep. you know, um, yeah, you pick any two. And you know what? I'll never, never sacrifice good, you know, because mm -hmm. it's it's my reputation out there. So, you 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 know, if it's going to be cheaper, it's going to take longer so I can take other clients at the I same will, time. I will say something about that, though. I've done things really fast for people, and the art director has said, something you do in 12 hours is going to be better than anybody something anybody does in three or four days. And I'm sure Storn has the same thing. Well, so yeah, I, 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 you know I just won't put bad product out. Oh, you can do like a dark painting. You do something very simple. That's true. Not bad. Not it's fast and cheap and it's simple. <laughs> yeah, I wish I could say I've never put out bad product. Um, but but I have. Um, uh, you know, sometimes my skills weren't up to the task. Mm -hmm. uh, sometimes I was learning as best as I could. But do I feel like it was worth the money that the publisher spent? Um, I hope so. I hope so. But I, when I go back and look at my older art, I'm like, wait, how did I get paid to, to do this? I don't know. But, uh, you know, I'm, I'm fairly fast, you too. Mm -hmm. But uh, so, so what's sort of the next stepping stone for, for publishers? Okay. So, well, I have a question actually here on the chat that I oh, can kind okay. of see. Um, it's the, the question is, if I was a new publisher, how would I know what, what it is I need for my game, both in amount and style? Mm. I think it depends on the product you're doing. Yeah, genre is important. Um, and, and talk to other publishers who are doing something similar to you or as, as similar or as close as you can get. Um, yeah, I mean, I've, I've worked on projects where there was an illustration every third page. And I've mm -hmm. worked on projects where there is, I did a, a bunch of drawings for John Wick, who did Houses of the Blooded, and I think we just had a chapter. There was just an illustration for a chapter. So I did, yeah. there was 10 chapters. I did 10, um, 10 illustrations, and they were simple. So yeah, some, go ahead. Uh, I think some of it depends on your, your budget and your time frame. Um, I would say always, if, if you're having someone do a cover for it, that's, uh, most important because that's what draws the, the person's eye to it originally. Um, after that, I would say, um, talk to the artist, the, mm -hmm. the artist might, if, especially if it's an artist who's done a similar type of project before, uh, as to what you're asking for, they'll, they'll have an idea of what works and what doesn't just through experience. And uh -oh. if you have an artist who is new, don't have them do more than one or two pictures for you. It may not come in on time. Somebody who's experienced will know, I know exactly this, in this time frame, I can do this many pictures. In your product, you want a picture, you know, for every, every page in a bestiary, or you want every six pages, you want an illustration available to you. Yeah, and, and it's some, some of them are, all over the place but yeah mm -hmm. and, and don't think you have to only have one artist per project um no. you can choose a couple artists with a uh with styles that work with each other um sometimes that doesn't even matter for your your product depending on what it is um but like for the kids novels i'm working on i'm working on the the third of a trilogy and uh the first book i did the cover and five pieces that's it the second book, it, it went up to 10. And the third book, uh, I'm losing count of how many pieces I have. I think around 16. Uh, but it's Don't just like... Don't be afraid to try, yeah. Yeah. 
don't be afraid to try new artists, but give them a firm deadline and don't give them more than two pieces and sketches. Many publishers I do sketches for. Publisher I'm working with now, I have a good relationship. He says, don't bother. You know, he knows I do yeah. what I want, but you know, and what he wants. It's why, what, you know, I know what the product needs, but for most publishers and any new publisher, you're going to have to ask for sketches. Yeah. yeah we, and, we, and we're we, all used to that. We yeah. like, it saves us time and money to do sketches and have you approve it at that stage than to have us finish a piece. And then you have a question about it. Make changes in the sketch stage. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, I have uh, another question, um, if you want me to ask it for you. Please. Sure. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, is, it a f is it a foul to ask for PSD players to stretch one piece for multiple pages, websites, video frames? Um, Not if the contract allows for it. No. No, that's, yeah. completely, that's completely reasonable. I mean, uh, you know, one of the things that artists hate is work for hire. But unfortunately, it's a necessary beast in our business. And um, the work for hire is I do a piece of artwork and the publisher owns it and can use it however the hell they want. Mm -hmm. um, I never see another dime from that. And that sucks because you're making money off of my work. And, you know, I much prefer, you know, you get a certain amount of money up front and then there's royalties or whatever or or I can use yeah. the artwork somewhere else. You know, there's a lot of different ways all those negotiations can happen. And now we're getting into, you know, legal uh, stuff. Right. Uh, it's, it's, it's on the list, so we can just jump to that now. Yeah, um, so there's lots of different ways you can, like, I, like all the commissions that I do, I tell people straight up, I'm going to collect those commissions. I'm going to put them in a, in a clip art uh, compilation, and I'm going to sell them online. So I get to continue mm -hmm. to make money off of those. And yeah. I make a, a, an okay amount of money off of those. Those, those, yeah. those have been very useful. So if a publisher comes to me and says, I want something a little cheaper, I say, well, here's an option. I'll, I'll give you first mm -hmm. publication rights. I'll even throw in something like I won't have a compete clause, like uh, a com uh, sorry, a compete clause for them. So it's like I won't turn around to another fantasy role playing game and give them this artwork. I could do, I can use it for an album cover or a novel, mm -hmm. or a paperback yeah. cover or a poster. So there's other avenues that I get a revenue stream, but um, they feel safe in in not. Um, having two role-playing games come out that look exactly the same, which doesn't yeah. anybody any good. Yeah. And like, I do something similar with like, I say, I won't, I won't sell it to your direct competitor. Um, but yeah. And going back to the work for hire thing, if you're a small press publisher or like uh, a self publisher, you're not going to afford my work for hire rates. It's going to be way too expensive for your budget. And these different types of rates are ways to get the price down. Um, but there's also there's also full rights, which is similar to work for hire, except I still I still retain ownership of the piece. But you have rights for everything else. But also, you can always just purchase more rights later. You know, for it's going to yeah. be a, a for a fee. You know, a much smaller fee than the original creation fee. You know. I think the cheapest rights you want would be uh, for the life, you want to print it for the life of the product and you don't want any competing printing for six months. The next step up is no, no printing in that genre for the life of the product, like gaming product or another book cover with the same cover, et cetera. Out of genre, very few people are going to notice it. If I sell a, like a gaming card and to get back to the person's original question, I've done something similar with gaming cards. I made one painting. They pulled 14 cards out of it for gaming cards Yeah, and used it for a poster and a box. Yeah. And so I used it for this, that, the other thing and 14 cards. And we knew that coming in and I got a nice fee for the painting. Yeah. And that's the thing. Mm -hmm. you, you have to let the artist know of doing that because if you start putting in in multiple places without telling the artist, 
you're you're de- technically breaching contract. So you need to let the artist know the fees, the fees, the fee to create a piece is much more than the fee to just use a piece that's already created. So it's it's oh. not going to be it's not going to be a big deal. Oh, you're talking using pieces that are already created is very very cheap. That's called second rights. Yes. And you often get really good deal because the artist nods their head and collects the money. Okay, so a follow up <laughs> question to that, if I may. Um, sure. When you when you're doing second rights or or selling a piece of art that has been previously used by another um, entity. Mm-hmm. Uh, is it common? Do you, do you feel like you have to disclose that someone else has used this art previously to the second or third or whatever buyer? Um, you, don't, you don't have to, but the relationship I have now, I'm offering some second right pieces which are excellently done, much above really high quality work to go with the bestiary. And I'm full disclosure of where it's printed and the publisher can decide whether they want to use that piece or not. Yeah, yeah, I don't think it's required, but I don't see why you wouldn't let them know. It's only good for the relationship. Only a small number of the pieces fit, but you know, I full disclosure, but sometimes not, (laughs) you know, you know, it depends on the person you're working with. Jordan, what do you think? Okay, oh, I don't. I don't really have anything to add, and I feel like I talk too much, so I was trying. To, ah, no, no. <laughs> I was trying to keep, sit on my hands on this one. Uh, we've caught up to the questions that are in the stream chat at the moment. Uh, audience, if you can hear me, say this. Uh, ask some more questions. Otherwise, uh, Jack, I guess if you want to go on to the next point that you were going to talk about. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I can do that. Um. Yeah. So. That pretty much, uh, pretty much uh, that covers a lot of what I was going over. Um, that covers that pretty much covers the basics of uh, of pricing. Um, we can go a little bit more into that. Where uh, let's see. Uh, so basically, what I have a uh, in in pricing, which is good for the working relationship as well, is. Uh, make a good faith effort to pay your artist <laughs> because especially if you're a new publisher, often what artists will do if they haven't worked with someone before is they'll ask for half down or a percentage down. down. Mm-hmm. And that kind of locks you both into a good working relationship because they know. Jack froze. They're oh. not. They know they're yeah. going to get some a quarter when you start when you sign if you know the artist is professional a quarter after sketches and a half upon completion is not unreasonable. It's a lot of bookkeeping though from I understand from the publisher's point of view so I have mm-hmm. no problem with doing you know a third up front and two thirds on completion or a half up front and half on completion Whatever, yeah. you know I I mean I would love to do a quarter I mean to make my life easier, a quarter on sketches, a quarter on sketches approval, and then half when when it's done. I would love mm-hmm. that. That would be, you know, and I guess, you know, with PayPal and stuff like that, that makes things a little bit easier. But it makes but some, it very easy. Yeah. yeah but um back in the day, just getting one check out of out of TSR could be a hassle <laughs> sometimes. <laughs> 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 you know, and not to mention that West End Games went belly up owing me ten grand. So you know, yeah, you know, that's that stuff kind of happened. Oh, no. uh, yeah. Oh. Yeah. Did a lot oh, of Star Wars art. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. The most uh, I'm ever in the whole four. Get better is signal, but I get washed out. Ouch, yeah, that, that hurts, man. That, yeah. Yeah, I've been, uh, but you know, as you go along and become more and more established as an artist that happens less and less like thankfully but, but mm-hmm. it, you know when you're starting out and and this is sort of word to the wise for the publishers is when you're working with young artists and they don't you know you might be able to take advantage of them but don't <laughs> because they'll come back and fight you karmically um because everybody talks to everybody in this business and and you know you want to have 
good work relationship. I mean, I, I get clients sometimes that come back 10, 15 years after I last worked with them. You know, it happens, yeah. you know, I run into them and they say, oh, I've got a project that would be really good for you. And, and then boom. So you, yeah. both sides don't want to deteriorate and burn those bridges. Yeah, exactly. Like the kids novels I work, I'm working on. I originally uh, worked on a, a Kickstarter car game for, for uh, the author called Fire at Will. Um, the Kickstarter didn't go off. It, it never really went anywhere from then. But a couple years later, he asked me to do work for the art for the artwork for the novels, mm -hmm. and now I'm on the third novel. So I mean, even though that first project didn't go anywhere, um, having a good relationship with him led to three more projects, big well, projects really, too. I feel really bad for Will. I mean, fire at Will. That's just you know, why are they all <laughs> Will? Poor guy. Uh, I have an interesting question from Darren. If uh, sure. you're ready to take it. Darren that oh, I know. Yeah, Darren Watts, yeah. Yeah, I know Darren. Yeah, we all do, don't we? <laughs> uh, okay, if you have a character, if you being, a, I think, a, a publisher uh, in this case, if you have a character called Black Mask, is it reasonable not to include the color of the character's mask in the art description and then be upset when the artist comes back with a, a character who has a green mask? Um, yeah. You, yeah. you have a reason to be upset and they should make that mm -hmm. change. And, and if they're working digitally, that should be 30 seconds worth of work. But let me also say this what? because because it's black and black doesn't show up also that great sometimes. And so people will use a really dark, you know, in painting because a black will make a hole in, the, in a painting. So a really, I can, really, really dark green uh, might be uh, a fill in for a black. Yeah. Go ahead, Lisa. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I'd use a dark uh, purple or blue for the highlights. Yeah, me too. Yeah. Yeah. Black yeah. Is, yeah. If it came, in, if it came in chartreuse green and he's now suddenly the chartreuse green mask, I mean, that's, no. you, <laughs> yeah. know, you know, you yeah, know. Yeah, that, I mean, that's, that's a change that should be expected of the artist because they didn't read the brief cor correctly. Uh, <laughs> That's like or Darren, or the ask, title of the character. That's like, Darren, if you asked me to do an ape and, and I did an orangutan with cybernetics instead of an ape with cybernetics, I mean. That'd be cool. <laughs> <laughs> Not that I would do such a thing. Okay, uh, another question if you want one. Sure. Uh, what's the difference in price between black and white art versus color work? For me, for me, often it's double because it, it takes twice as much time. I got to still do all the black and white work, and then it can take equal time to do all the color. And in reality, it's probably three times amount of time yeah. mm -hmm. that it takes to do good color work over black and white. I mean, I can bang out pencils and grayscale and, and uh, ink work. Uh, I, can, I can do two, three images a day. Um, if I'm doing them in color... I, I, vignettes. I mean, if they're multi-figured, that's the other thing that's that's very time-consuming. If you have three or four figures interacting with each other and interacting with an environment, you know, like a tavern scene where people are sitting and standing, and there's oh. people in the balconies, or you know, my my you know my nightmare is like ship rigging during a pirate boarding scene. You know, you have fifty <laughs> figures and there's ship rigging and there's ah, oh, there's just so much detail. That's going to take a long time, whether it's black and white or color. Um, yeah, 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 the uh, the, the bar the corollary fight. is how long it takes to do the piece determines the price, yeah, yeah. If it's a color piece, a little piece I can bang out in a day, you mm -hmm. know. But uh, I'm, I said I'm fast with color, I'm not so fast with black and white, but <laughs> <laughs> Lisa, are you, are you mostly it depends on how fast you your artist? Are you oh no, that? I'm acrylic. Oh, you're acrylic. acrylic. Okay. Uh, yeah. Yeah. It, a, a lot of pricing it's has here. to do with a lot of pricing has to do with how long it takes the artist to do the piece, and they'll let you know that up front. Um, for me, black and white is <laughs> is definitely way faster than color, so that's why I I price accordingly. Um, but yeah, if it's a a, a bar fight, definitely takes a lot longer to draw than a 
than a single person with a sword, you know? <laughs> and that's and that's where if if an artist balks a little bit, you can ask them to do something that's called a vignette or, or sometimes it's called a spot illustration where it's not a full background, but it's just maybe, a you know, the girl is sitting on a, on a, a task and there's a suggestion of a table behind her. You know, you're mm-hmm. sort of suggesting the bar scene, but the amount of detail that is happening is is very minimalistic and and we're really focused just on the figure and so um you can do that with just like you know hey i just need a little spot illustration of a sword or a helmet or you know a a a rocket pack for a science fiction pulp game or something you know so there's 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 ways of creating images that are very simple and very quick for the artist to do then that will be also kind of cheap let me build on what storn said don't ask for more than you need. If you want a portrait of that girl sitting on the barrel, don't ask for a bar scene behind her. Ask mm-hmm. maybe a curtain behind her. All you want is a portrait of Jane on the barrel. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, if you ask exactly. for too much and you get too exacting about what it has to look like, it comes terribly difficult and the artist doesn't want to do it really. For now, minimal let, me, amount of let, me, yeah. let me devil advocate that for a second, because I don't mind when art directors come at me with a lot of detail if they if we have the understanding that I'm going to pair it away like like mm-hmm. they, they're making suggestions okay. mm-hmm. and that's OK. I mean, you know, you can come mm-hmm. to them and say, hey, maybe it could be this or that or that. But but then when the artist comes back and says, um, yeah, let me let me strip away some of these details and let me focus on some of these other details, because I think it would make mm-hmm. a better piece that's going to that's going to serve the project better yeah, yeah all don't you... get picky you in about the details i mean don't demand that every detail be in there and highlighted it and three faces in the background and i have to recognize the people that sort of thing is not going to happen and when it comes to the printing they're going to be so small you won't see it <laughs> yeah like i so think about yeah. what you're yeah, I definitely have uh, an- another thing you can do is you talk to your artist beforehand and I'll send a finished pencil line before I do a- go to full rendering. So at that point, when it's still pencil, it's easy enough to make changes. Right. If they say, and, I really need a tricorner hat in here, and I forgot to mention it, you know, the art director yeah. says that, you know, because it's really important to this character. Of course, you know, then we throw it on the table next to him or he's got it in his hand or he's wearing it on his head, you know, whatever, yeah. whatever it takes to yeah. to sell that character or that story. Um, yeah, those things, those yeah. things do happen. Sure. Yeah, that's that's fine. And I pretty much allow a certain amount of major changes before it affects price after I start going to permanent media. When I'm still in pencil, I, it's not a bi- as big of a deal to me. But when I start going into permanent media, that's when I, I start to allow only a certain amount of revisions. Cool, thanks. Okay, uh, I have a question. Uh, w- have any of you uh, ever engaged in uh, like being part of a Kickstarter project where your work or your pending work was part of a Kickstarter situation? Can you talk a little bit about how that differs from the more normal contracting with a publisher or, or a designer over their work? Uh, with, with Fire and Will, I did it through uh, Kickstarter. And that was a little different because they paid me for some work up front and um, some, some work promised upon funding, which is fine. Um, I won't work without payment but I will work out a before and after list of, uh, of options. Uh, the one mistake they made with it, they told me, is that they paid me for a black and white rendering of the cover and they were gonna pay me for color after it funded, but they were saying with all the fees, it actually cost, would have cost them more than to just pay me for the color in the first place. With all the Kickstarter fees, yeah, I do, I do a lot of the other half of the Kickstarter after the fact because I, I promised 
color illustrations for everything here. And then they have to put out their product. Hey, color illustrations, <laughs> you know? Yep. <laughs> yeah, they, that's a big one with starters. Oh, we we promised 20 color illustrations now. It's like, <laughs> yeah, where do they come from? The, the color. Okay, yeah, you don't just you don't have to have it finished before you go to Kickstarter, but you should have at <laughs> least a handful of pieces to give a different different uh, feel of the product to get interest in it. I, I and if you so. promise something, oh, I'm sorry. If uh, you I promise to... something, you ahead, have Lisa. to. You better have. Uh, it's very short. If you promise something like color illustrations, you better know color illustrators and not hunt around for them after the Kickstarter. Yeah, I mean, I think the way they lined that up for Jack and said, hey, let's let's pay you up front for the work that you're doing. And, you know, maybe three months from now, you're going to get more work. Which I was fine with That's because fine. we um, we discussed all that beforehand. That, that mm -hmm. I was also going to say that I think that Kickstarter are, you know, when you're launching a Kickstarter, and I see this a bit and I've been asked to do this, is sort of do what is called concept art, you know, where you're just, it's a proof of, Mm -hmm. of concept and it's not really the final product so they could be just pencil sketches and that could be fairly cheap or or marker comps um can be very cheap or you know the digital version of marker comps which which i do sometimes um you know where you look at video games where they have sort of like this is not going to show up in the video game but we want this environment or this character to just you know this is what we're aiming at this is the feel we're aiming at this is the ambiance the mood etc the tone um so that kind of art can be done fairly quickly and easily and doesn't have to be, you know, the end all be all, you know, no, the end all be all. It doesn't have to be the novel cover because it's yeah. a different medium, you know, it's, you don't have to come up with the cover first. It's not, um, uh, yeah, that's all I want to say. If you want concept art to sell the product, though, right, 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 right. Yeah. And if you want painting. And you you have to find somebody who work can work closely with the art director because there's going to be a lot of revision to that. I did the concept for what the hell was that Doomtown thing on Mars, Lost Worlds. I did the first painting for that, and I had to work totally with the art director for that for a piece. And they wanted it to show this monster. They wanted to show this alien, and we kept going back and forth to make sure we got the whole concept perfect. So that's something totally different. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Actually, this is a pretty good lead into what Storm was talking to me over email about is a uh, reference. Mm -hmm. uh, send, mm -hmm. send, send the artist some reference picks of what you're looking for. Um, whether it be like mentions of specific pieces they've done through their, by looking at their website or other artists for a general style you're thinking of. Um, just so they know what's kind of what's in your head and they don't, um, they, they go in the right direction. Yeah. Not, not only is that like, we get a peek into what you're thinking of in terms of creative, you've saved us time and mm -hmm. artists love having time being saved for them. Like if you say, I <laughs> want this, you know, oh, the, yeah. the tricorner hat and here's one that I found in the, you know, the, the library of Congress, a photo of it in the library. Of Congress. Awesome. You know, then we can go, oh, and it needs a feather in it for the character? Fine. We can add the feather. But but you've done a lot of the work for us, and that's that's great. Um, style guide is also really useful. When I used to work for AEG when they did Legend of the Five Rings, which is a massive, massive card game, um, we had a digital style guide online that we could all reference to and see, you know, because there was different clans, and each clan had a really different specific look right down to their color like the color, crayon, white and blue color, white. yeah their hair color all white color, color hair yes yeah. it's like, white yeah. color hair and what do i do with the eyebrows it always threw me off i can't remember what to do um but but, but that was you incredibly could, you couldn't useful. speak japanese if you worked for that game <laughs> <laughs> yes or you couldn't speak japanese <laughs> But anyway, yeah, uh, it's, what was I going to say? Now I've totally forgotten it, but it wasn't important. <laughs> Any questions on, on mm -hmm. providing reference? Yeah, I've got one more question here. Um, this isn't specifically in the reference uh, area, but um, 
how much a role does character design play in pricing? When is it an extra cost? Well, uh, when you're designing characters, don't be afraid to say, I want somebody who looks like Tilda Swinson, but isn't, or Tom Hanks. <laughs> that makes, that's the reference thing. But it depends yeah. on your right. I guess mm -hmm. it depends on how, like, like if you're talking about character concepts, like in video games, it gets really difficult because every piece of equipment they have or every look has to be 3D modeled and, or it has to, it has to be understood by engineers, right? You know, software engineers to get this look right and software artists to get it right. Um, so I think a lot of time gets spent on that. In role-playing games and in publishing, I mean, usually I'm doing a character on one pass. You know, it's mm -hmm. it's yep. like, it, he's an orc barbarian who likes to dress up nicely. So can and we show him leaving the blacksmith, but have, you know, he's pimped out. Okay. You know, I can usually get that down in one pass. Now, occasionally someone will come back to me and say, no, we need it to be more specific. I think for novels, I think you find that a lot of times, like if you go and look at Tarzan or Conan or Elric or, you know, let's go to science fiction, Luke Skywalker, and you're, you're not aware of the movies and you're just reading the description in the, you know, an Alan Dean Foster novel, the description is really spare and there's not a lot there. And so you, the artist brings a ton of fill in the blanks to that problem and sometimes oh. the writer goes no that's not what i had in mind and that's when it might have to go through another iteration um i know i'm kind of dancing around this uh, jack do you, do yeah. you have anything to um well the novels are all recurring characters so i had to do a bit of character design for them and it took a while in the beginning but it depends on what kind of pieces you're doing. If you're doing one cheap interior, don't expect the artist to spend lots and lots of time on it. But if it's a full project with multiple pieces, I have to do that work for all the pieces anyway. So as long as it's not something that takes forever, I don't see it as, I see it as part of the process. Um, and I'll pick on one of your examples as make sure you're specific. Tarzan, the Tarzan of the book is not the Tarzan of the movie. They are two diff completely yeah. different characters. The Tarzan of the books is this bronzed, homicidal, black-haired, homicidal maniac. And the Tarzan of the jungle is this blonde, friendly person <laughs> who wears clothes. <laughs> yeah, and I mean, pretty much I do all my character design through sketches. So none of it takes me super long amounts of time, um, as long as as long as my client is responsive in responsive to sketches I send them. Like if you get back to me pretty quick about uh, what you like and what you don't like, I can go through the iterations and it won't add much to the to the time frame. I think if if it's important to the publisher that like um like like a tear sheet of a character is you know i want some drawings like like then you should go and the publisher should go and take a look at alex Toth's work for hannah barbera because mm -hmm. he did these tear sheets for like johnny quest and for for you know and for, uh gosh what is it um my tour and all these other cartoons and they're beautiful they're gorgeous and they give you um uh, uh what's the space space ghost you know like they're so good and if you if you went to an artist and say i need something like this except it's going to be you know my project but i do want these here to show to other artists that's that's a project that's that you're going to pay some money for that because that yep. person's going to have to spend some time you know the simpler that you get the more iterations you have to go through it's like logo design logos are super simple they take forever to get there. It takes a long time to be mm -hmm. and to be perfect because every line, every shape has to carry so much information and it has to be perfect. Yeah. And I'll send a bunch of thumbnails and with the, the main logo for, for the kids' novels, 
like he chose uh, oh I like this from this sketch this from this sketch this from this sketch combine them and it didn't take very long after that but you know if you want a fully rendered piece of a character design well that's a piece you know that's another yeah. piece but if it's if it's uh, just a uh, if it's just to design the character that's part of the process and I usually include it in my cost if I yeah. because I'll know ahead of time Okay, great. Um, we've got about five minutes left. Uh, so I recommend we uh, plug all of you one more time, say who you are, how you can be contacted, and talk about your most exciting recent project that you're working on that you want to uh, tell everybody about. Uh, and we'll wrap wow. it up. Good question. Okay, so my name is Jack Tara. I'm, uh, once again, I'm, uh, I coordinate the Artist Alley for Double Exposure. I work on kids' novels and games. I've been talking about the kids' novel the whole, the whole time, so <laughs> really need to go into that. Um, but you can, uh, you can contact me at, uh, through my website, jackpower.com. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm Storm. I'm Lisa and Lake. Oh, go ahead, Lisa. Go, go ahead. for it. Go for it. No, no, no. Please. Oh, okay. No, no, no. Okay. Please go. I'm Liz Ann Lake. Uh, I can be contacted at my Facebook page, The Fantastic Art of Liz Ann Lake. I'm the only Liz Ann with that spelling on Facebook, so I'm easy to find. And um, let's see, the most exciting, I do a lot of book covers and a lot of fantasy, science fiction. And the most exciting thing I did this year was 50 illustrations for the Land of the Rising Sun relaunch in the style of Japanese paintings, nice. <laughs> which is like something I always wanted to try. <laughs> That's very cool. Um, I'm Storm Cook. Uh, I have a very unusual name. You can just Google me and you'll find me. Uh, but I, I do have stornart.com. Storm.cook at gmail.com is a good way to find me. Um, my favorite project is the next one. I, you know, uh, that's, yeah, I always get really buzzed and usually need to take a nap after getting a really cool new project. So, um, yeah, I love doing action. I love doing fantasy. Um, I'm known for superhero art, uh, but I love doing fantasy, uh, especially if it, if it involves action or quiet scenes too, like, like, you know, doing a Jill, the, the milkmaid sitting on the barrel would be a really fun piece to do as opposed to. It's a paladin with armor and a, you know, dwarf with an axe. And, you know, like if you can avoid cliches and, and present art that is, is, gets around some of the tropes and cliches, I'm your man. I'm, I'm all in for that. Let's, how can we twist them? How can we make them different? Nice. So, uh, so we're running low so, on time. So I'm just going to say that uh, there's another panel on the, uh, the pricing end of art at eight o'clock tonight lisanne and i were both be on it um it's called uh art for your game without breaking the bank and i'll be on also be on the uh the artist alley discord cha uh text channel most of the day um and there's some other artists on there too and uh yeah that's about all i have Anybody? I hope I'm on a, I'm I a hope Sunday you the panel. panel. <laughs> oh, yeah, you're on a Sunday panel with me about uh, composition. Oh, okay, okay. Awesome. Um, yeah, the uh, the budgeting one, the art budget one's tonight at 8 and I think 4-ish. I'd have to look it up, the, uh, the one on Sunday for composition. It's uh, in the middle of the afternoon. And I just want to say to anyone who's still listening, like if, if you have questions that we didn't answer, or you, you think of a question that just came up, don't hesitate in, in, in emailing me, you know, two, three days, two, three months from now and asking. I'm, I'm more than happy to help people out. Um, you know, giving, giving help is, is easy and fun. Yeah. yeah. The Same moderators here. can give you the email of us if you ask. Yeah. And you have a project. Yeah, my, my my working email is jackpara.artist at gmail.com. And it's also on my website if you forget it. Um, and I'm on the Discord channel here. Uh, so I have it set to at notifications. So if you put at my name on anything, it'll alert me. Um, and I can help with contact info for anybody. 
All right, I have to go see if my forklift is uh, fixed because I have to move some wood pellets around. Oh, cool. <laughs> the high one was fun. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, everybody. Have a great rest of your Metatopia and have a good day. Thanks. Bye -bye. Thank you, Mickey, for Thank all you. your Thank you. Bye -bye.